Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Ram 1500, we're going to be showing you how to install the Hayes Energize 3 trailer brake controller. But before we get into that, uh, let's just take a minute, check this out, and make sure it's going to be right for you. So you are wanting to pull your trailer around and it has brakes. Um, you're going to need a way to apply those trailer brakes. That way, you, know, you can slow everything down as a whole unit, uh, as opposed to just relying on your vehicle to, to do all the braking. And that's where a trailer brake controller like this one is, is going to come into play. So with this one, it's good for trailers that have up to three axles. So uh, that's going to cover a lot of people's trailers out there. And one of my favorite parts about this particular one is it's super simple, um, not a whole lot to it, but it has, um, in my opinion, what's a really nice feature, and that's the fact that it is a proportional type brake controller. Um, and so the advantage a proportional type brake controller has over a time delayed type one is it's a little bit smoother. Um, you're gonna have a, a smoother braking transition, and it's just a little bit more predictable, at least in my opinion. So the way a proportional one like this works is the braking force is gonna match, you know, the braking force in the truck the trailer's going to match it. So let's say if you're, you know, maybe rolling up to a stop sign, you get about halfway on the brake pedal. Trailer is going to do the same thing. Uh, on the other hand, if you're going down the highway, uh, maybe there's an accident, um, and, you, and you need to come to an emergency type stop and you stand on that brake pedal here in the truck, the trailer is going to do the same thing. And so, um, you know, it's going to slow down as, as a whole unit and not you know, you're not going to have the trailer kind of pushing you around or trying to drag you back. So even though this one is proportional, you are going to have an adjustment, which is the gain here, um, which essentially just means how aggressive uh, or how much power is going to be sent back to the brake. So you are able to fine tune that a little bit. So say maybe if you just thinking of an example, you have an enclosed trailer and it's empty, you know, you can dial that down some, uh, you know, on the way to your destination, you're maybe going to pick up a car or something heavy, get it inside, and you can turn that up a little bit to get a little bit more braking power, you know, when you're loaded down real heavy. So it's good to be able to fine tune that to your particular item or load that you're carrying. Uh, it is gonna have a manual override lever as well. So when you slide this, what this will do is apply just the trailer brakes. All right, and so a lot of times you'd use that in the event of uh, a sway situation. You know, you're going down the road, wind's blowing, you're hitting bumps, the trailer might start getting a little squirrely on you. You can slowly apply the trailer brakes uh, and kind of get it slowed down and back under control and, and riding straight behind you. Other than that though, you know, not really a whole lot to it. Um, if you're looking for a really simple, easy to use, proportional type brake controller, uh, this is one that's definitely going to get the job done. As far as the installation goes, uh, not bad at all. Um, we actually installed this in conjunction with the Kurt adapter plug. And so literally, you plug in to a connector under the dash, plug in the brake controller, mount it up, and that's really about it. So it shouldn't run in into too many issues, but uh, if you like to hang around, feel free to. We'll go ahead and hook it up together now. To begin our installation, we're going to be here uh, in the front seat of our Ram. And what we're going to need to do is locate the factory uh, connector plug, which is located behind this panel here in our dash. So we'll have to remove this, uh, starting by taking out two screws along the bottom. We're going to take a seven millimeter to get them removed. With the two screws out, this should just kind of pop out. So if you grab the edges of it, we can let this come down. And we should have room now without having to disconnect anything to find our connector plug. So if you look up and behind the panel there, we're gonna have a handful of connectors that are just kind of taped up to some wiring. The trailer brake controller connector should be located within this bundle. So what I'm gonna do is remove the tape and hopefully we can drop it down and, and have a better look at it. So I just pulled uh, the connector out of that tape and this is the one we're looking for. Uh, it has four pins in it. 
that's going to be our trailer brake controller plug. And now what we can do is take our adapter here that we're using, simply just plug that right on it. So I went ahead and just dropped our connector, you know, below our panel here, and we can reinstall the panel, but this is a good opportunity to, to see what we got going on the back. Um, so we're going to mount our controller, um, you know, somewhere on the right side of the panel. And really the only thing we have going on here is, is this piece. So, uh, you know, about halfway down is where we want to mount it. So just to kind of give you a visual of what's going on the back side, because when you mount a controller up, you, you know, you don't want to drill into anything of importance. So we're in pretty good shape here and we'll just reinstall this the opposite way that we removed it. At this point you can mount up your bracket um, and we're gonna go right here in this location. Now when you do this, you know, make sure to try to get it as level as you can. And we're just going to take the included screws and run them into the dash to get this secure. Before we actually mount up our brake controller, what I like to do is kind of pre-tap the holes there in the side of it that we're going to use as our attachment points. And that's because, um, you know, they're not threaded right out of the box. And so trying to hold it up to the bracket and get it started can kind of be a little tricky sometimes. So I just take the included screws and get them started. Uh, it's just a quarter inch socket, you know, run it all the way down into all of them, which I've done. And that'll just make it a lot easier to mount this up. So we'll go ahead, plug the brake controller into the adapter plug. Just snaps right into place. And then we can mount this up to our bracket. And when you're doing this, there is a uh, particular way you need to, to mount it. You want it to be facing toward the direction of travel. And you can run it flat like this or up a little ways, I believe 35 degrees. Uh, is what they, they recommend. So we should be in pretty good shape because you still want to find that happy medium. You don't want it to be banging on your knee or anything. So about like this is, is sufficient. So we'll go ahead and get our screws started and come back and snug them down. On the side of the brake controller, once you have it mounted, there's this arm here, it's called the deceleration arm. You wanna position that in a way to where it is facing straight down. What we can do now is test our controller to make sure it's working properly. So I just hooked up to a test box uh, to do this. Chances are pretty good you're not gonna have one, so you can use your trailer, but keep in mind if your trailer has an issue, you know, it might mislead you into thinking it's something on the brake controller side. but. Uh, we'll do a couple of things here. One, we can hit the manual override button. We can see that light illuminating and we're getting power back at our test box. Then I'm also going to hit our brake pedal and we'll see that light come on so we know we got power getting sent back. Um, so it looks like we're in pretty good shape. From here, uh, what I'll do is simply just clean up our wiring, put it under the dash, zip tie it up so it's out of sight. And uh, that's really about it. Now when you are zip tying this, make sure to Stay away from moving parts, you know, your steering column and things like that. Uh, that way, don't get hung up. So here's how it turned out after cleaning up the wiring and kind of tucking it under the dash. I did use about a six inch piece of wire loom to go over the brake controller wires just to kind of uh, help it blend in and, and clean up the look. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Hayes Energize 3 trailer brake controller on our 2022 Ram 1500.